My name is Suzanne King and I was born in 1951. I remember um, at one time, this gentleman, Mr. Mary Shaw, there was a discussion about having a festival. We used to have a carnival and then Mr. Mary Shaw came up with the idea of having something that was more related to our heritage, which was the heritage of the sugar industry. And I remember Julian Mary Shaw um, with a donkey cart, all decorated and with his white beard and hat. And that is my first memories of Propova. Before that, it was Carnival run by the JCs, and Marvel Manning had won the JCs Carnival what year. But my first memory is the cart parade led by Julian Marshall. I was just a, really an observer at that time. But then in 1985, I joined the National Cultural Foundation, which was headed by director Elombe Motley. And I really got involved in the crop over because I was the cultural officer for Christ Church and St. Michael South. So I was really deeply involved in the crop over, which was at that time very much community-based. And Elombe had um, conceived the names of things like Katuman, Kahabalapak. All of these came out of his time at the crop over at, the, at, uh, of crop over at that time at the National Cultural Foundation, which was then based at the Grotto. Um, and we were culture, I was the cultural officer for Christchurch and St. Michael's South, so I had to deal with the community groups all in that area, go and meet with them and get them to participate in crop, crop over. I can remember traveling to Silver Sands with Ivy and teaching little boys how to, to mount themselves on the stilts. Also, I remember I was the cultural officer for the Air Sergeant Village as well, and um, the, the community officer was Ashanti Trotman. And Ashanti and myself organized several events at the community center. There was also a band, I think it was Roseanne Lewis who designed it, and it had the Rasta colors, I remember very well, because my children and myself were in the band, and they came out of the community. So it was really more a community effort. Silver Hill had their own little carnival, their own little crop over, Sergeant Village. So it was a community-based activity at the time. That is my memories of the early um, crop over. I always attend some of the tents, as many as I can. Always the semi-finals because I follow the social commentary. I love the social commentary. And of course the semi-finals and then the finals. A show like this, of course, I would attend. Also, I liked when they used to have Bacchanal time versus the rest of Kapova. I don't go to Bushy Park, but I watch it on television. Uh, I, I know, but I've gone to East Coast Road as well, when they had it at East Coast Road, um, in the days when I was more able to climb hills and do those kind of things. But now, I, I will always attend the finals. The finals is really my, my, my peak, like peak of the festival, because I don't jump. I have also participated in jumping in, in the bands. I've jumped with Doug Hoy, with Marcia Chandler, but that was when I was you know, much younger. I had jumped with, with those, um, those people on Kaduma Day. So I have participated in almost every aspect of the festival. I have attended um, Trinidad Carnival, but I didn't jump in the band. I went to the Marsh Grau and to the Panorama. Um, and the Calypso competition, but I've never jumped on the streets in Trinidad, but I have attended Trinidad Carnival. Well, because I didn't jump, I can't really talk about the experience of jumping in the bands, but what I found about the Damash crowd was the spectacle of the costumes. Their costumes are massive and beautifully um, decorated and wonderfully conceived. That is where you see the art, really, of the masquerade. Trinidad has really produced the art of the costuming and I would long to see the, the big mask come back. I love the big mask and I'm hoping that you know maybe when the economic crisis is passed that we can get back and get the sponsorship for the for the big mask for the you know the massive costumes they are absolutely fantastic. I think it is for everybody. I think 
you know, it is part of our culture, it is part of our heritage, and I think Barbadians should see it as part of themselves because at the end of the day, we are all Barbadians. Our heritage is a, a unique heritage still. There are things that I see, like the Tukban and so here, that we don't, they don't have anywhere else. So we should celebrate it. So it's for everybody, for the, from the young to the old, and everybody should really come out and support the festival in whatever way they can. They can. It means to me a celebration of Barbados, of us as a people, of the music, the dance, the storytelling, and the merriment, and the, the unity of, of us as a people, all dancing and singing together and celebrating Barbados. No matter how hard the times are, we are all Barbados at the end of the day, and we must celebrate our artists. We have some wonderful artists. You know, there's nobody like the mighty Gabby in any part of the world, you know, and he is unique, and that's only one. We have so many great artists that if we don't have a time to celebrate them, and the Calypsonians always tell us a story, tell us our history, and we must celebrate them because they are people who bring us together. They, they, they always... Um, they are the voice of the people. They tell about what is wrong in the society. They tell about what is good. And they are, they are the griots of our society. They, they, they record our history in song. And that is very important. It's crop over time again. Come see the beaches, see the sunshine. Come celebrate and have a good time. It's crop over, tell a friend. Pan pan the sun, everyone lining. Book your ticket and come and join in the festival. Pick a day crop, sweet so